You got zero at the table, man. All kinds of shit break through. Pick me, pick me. Greetings, humans, and welcome back. I'm Joey Pigtails, and this is episode number seven of my poker vlog, which takes place Tuesday, May 9th, at Orange City Racing and Card Club, and includes some hands from a short 1-2 PLO session that afternoon. At the end of the vlog, I'm going to be going over some changes happening at Orange City Racing and Card Club, as well as Daytona, including changes to buy-in limits and straddles, as well as the introduction of double board bomb pots for most games, including 1-2 No Limit and 1-2 uh, PLO, going into effect Monday, May 15th. I'll have all the details after the hands, as well as give you my thoughts on the changes, so stick around at the end for the updates. With that, let's get into the hands. In the first hand of the vlog, I look down at Ace of Hearts, King of Hearts, Ten of Clubs, Seven of Clubs, and limp in to get a feel for the table. There are a couple more limps before the button opens to $20. The blinds fold, I call, and one other player calls to see a flop of King of Spades, Ten of Diamonds, Nine of Clubs. I flop top two pair here, but there is a clear straight on the board, so I need to act cautiously. <clears throat> I check and check around. These checks behind are telling. They aren't checking a straight here, but they may check a set to evaluate. The turn is a blank, the three of hearts. I want to build a pot now, so I fire $35 into 60, and just the button calls. The river is the two of spades, as clean as I can ask for. Opponent seems sticky, so I fire $60 hoping for a crying call. After an extremely long tank, he unfortunately folds. I went ahead and showed him my hand, as I'm looking for some bluff spots later where I can barrel some hands when I actually don't have it, so it's good to show these kind of hands down and uh, get that rep built. In the next hand, I look down at Ace of Spades, Ten of Clubs, Nine of Clubs, Nine of Spades, and open to $20. I get three calls to a really good looking flop of Jack of Spades, Seven of Clubs, Three of Spades. I flop a nut flush draw and a gutter to the nut straight. When it's checked to me, it's not necessary to bet big here since most of the opponents have shorter stacks. I fire $35 for value, and everyone folds to a short stack player who jams over the top for a total of 70. I go ahead and call, and we see the queen of clubs on the turn and the four hearts in the river. The turn was really good for me, giving me way more outs, but I broke down on the river. My opponent had a king high spade draw with a jack in his hand, so the pair of jacks ends up taking this one down. With Queen of Spades, Queen of Hearts, Ten of Diamonds, Five of Spades, I open a $20 from middle position. I get one call from a late position player to see a flop of Ace of Hearts, Ten of Clubs, Six of Clubs. Being the RFI, I have the uncapped range here, so I fire $30 looking for a fold. That doesn't happen though, as the opponent quickly calls. The turn is the King of Diamonds, and since the front door draw missed and I'm hard blocking the current nut straight, I bet $75 as a bluff, and my opponent doesn't make me wait long at all before folding. See? With Queen of Diamonds, Jack of Spades, Nine of Hearts, Eight of Diamonds, I open a $20 and get five calls to a flop of King of Diamonds, Nine of Diamonds, Queen of Clubs. I check here, but I flop a lot of equity that isn't the nuts, so in real time I'm feeling kind of froggy. It's checked to the button, bets pot, another player jams for about $150, and having a little over 400 behind, I decided to go with this based upon pot odds and having a lot of redraw outs versus the current nuts. I however end up breaking out and get stacked here. Player in seat 7 also gets stacked and leaves, so I'll go ahead and jump over to that chair for the remainder of the vlog. As I'm getting set up over in seat 7, I rebuy $500 and immediately get involved in an all-in 4 ways with 8 of hearts, 7 of spades, 4 of spades, 4 of diamonds, on a flop of 5 of spades, 6 of clubs, 2 of hearts, where I flop a partial wrap on a rainbow board. The turn is the 2 of diamonds, and the river is the 8 of diamonds, bringing in the straight, and I scoop this pot. The larger stack had Ace of Spades, Ace of Hearts, King of Diamonds, Nine of Spades, and the other two players don't show. And they say, what is this bullshit? Who plays that? With that hand, I go from being stuck $500 to being up about $100 on the session. Oh yeah. A few hands later, I look down at King of Diamonds, King of Clubs, Six of Hearts, Three of Hearts in early position and limp in. Let's see a cheap flop. We end up going six ways to a flop of King of Clubs, Queen of Diamonds, Jack of Hearts. I flop top set here, but this is a wet board and I'd rather not bloat this pot like I did earlier with a drawing hand. 
The flop is checked around, and we see a four of clubs on the turn. It's checked to a late position player who bets $15. Another player calls, and I go ahead and call as well. With $75 in, the river is the beautiful queen of hearts, giving me top boat, and when it's checked to me, I fire $50 for value. Should I go for more here? Let me know what you think. Both players call, and I roll over my top boat and take another decent sized pot down here. The early position, position player rolls over Queen of Spades Jack of Hearts for a lower boat, which was behind the whole way. In the next hand, I look down at those beautiful and always welcome pocket aces. Ace of Hearts, Ace of Spades, Five of Hearts, Two of Clubs. There's a button straddle, the small blind calls, the big blind folds, and I go ahead and pot it to 25. A late position player and the button call before the small blind now goes all in for $53. This is a perfect sizing as it reopens action and allows me to re-raise, which actually takes quite a while to figure out the sizing. It doesn't really matter though, as the bigger stack folded, but a smaller stack calls off. With $335 in, the board ends up running out 4 of clubs, 4 of hearts, 3 of diamonds, jack of diamonds, 10 of clubs. I roll over my aces up, and it's good to take down another pot. In the last hand of the vlog, I look down at Jack of Hearts, Ten of Clubs, Seven of Diamonds, Six of Hearts, and limp in. This is usually a fold pre-flop, but I'm feeling good and want to see some flops. With $25 in, we see the flop of Nine of Spades, Seven of Hearts, Two of Diamonds, Five Ways. I flopped a gutter to the nuts straight here, and a pair, but I'm not loving this hand and check with the field to the button who bets $25. Two other players end up calling this, and I reluctantly make the call as well, getting a good implied odds to hit this gutter ball. And what do you know? The turn brings the Queen of Clubs, which isn't the card that we want to see. I check and flow, and thankfully the button checks back as well. Oh, there you are, Peter. How the hell does that Miracle Eight of Hearts uh, rip off on the river? Who cares how? All I know is it's there, and it's time to get some value. When checked to me, I bet $50, hoping uh, for some crying calls, but they all fold and I take this one down. Shortly after this hand, I end up getting called for the main game, and I decided to rack up and head out, since that game looked absolutely horrid, but booking a small win here feels really, really good. Yeah, baby, it does feel good to book a win. I've been on a downswing lately, so I've been doing a lot of reflecting and studying to plug my leaks and stay focused. Like today, I've taken some aggressive lines in spots where my equity is sort of indifferent to calling or folding, and I'm losing a lot of those runouts, so the evaluation comes from choosing better spots with more robust equity, as well as shrug folding the more marginal hands like the Queen Jack 9 8 hand from earlier. Getting down to business, big changes are coming to Orange City Racing and Card Club in Daytona. I didn't see this posted online as of production, but this information is posted publicly at the card rooms uh, for your review. The major changes I'm going to cover right now go into effect on Monday, May 15th, and cover buy-in caps, straddles, and what everybody really came here to find out about, the new rules for bomb pots. So the buy-in changes we are seeing don't affect my primary game of 1-2 PLO, which remains at $100 minimum uh, and $500 maximum buy-ins. 1-2 No Limit Hold'em has seen the max buy-in increase from $200 to $300, which is a welcome change and now on par with most other rooms in Florida. 2.5 No Limit Hold'em has seen the minimum buy-in increase from $200 to $300, and the maximum buy-in increase from $800 to $1,200. And overall, I think those are all great changes. The 5.5 No Limit Hold'em 5.5 PLO games used to be $600 minimum buy-in and 2K initial cap with table stakes afterwards, but that has changed for both games. Now the minimum buy-in uh, is $500 for both games, which went down, and the cap is now $3,000 with no match the stack. I know there are a number of players that like to buy in huge to these games, but I like the cap. If I jump into 5.5 and run up a stack, I'd like to not have to sit with people buying in to cover me at those stakes. It should be noted they do spread larger games, but I didn't see any changes listed for those. As for straddles, the rooms used to offer a Mississippi straddle, either under the gun or on the button, with button getting priority for all games. This will remain the same for 1-2 and 1-3 No Limit Hold'em, but is changing for the other games. Essentially, now players are allowed to straddle from any position but the big blind, and they are now allowing one re-straddle. I'm assuming this is allowed from any position after the initial straddle, as the rules don't really clarify this, but do indicate that action starts to the left of the biggest straddle. 
So 2.5 no limit hold limit up and all PLO games may start playing a little bigger or essentially with smaller effective stacks. The final changes coming are bomb pots. Prior to these changes, double board bomb pots were only allowed on 5.5 games or higher. Now they are going to be allowed in all of these games once per dealer change. The amount per uh, player is five times the big blind, so 1 2 no limit hold'em and PLO will have $10 bomb pots, and 2 5 and 5 5 will have $25 bomb pots. They also clarified that regardless of stakes, the rake on bomb pots is going to be $10 even. They didn't indicate if they were still taking the $2 drop for the high hand bonus, but we'll find that out on Monday. So, this is huge news. I personally love double board bomb pots. I've studied them to a degree and have played hundreds of them, so I feel pretty good about being able to play these uh, with a new group of people. I even did a vlog on these, which Bart Hansen from Crush Live Poker dissected as an internal CLP training video, so I'm ready for these changes. As someone who feels pretty competent with bomb pots, I feel a bit awkward expressing some concerns here for the 1-2 PLO game specifically, but here we go. I know from experience that bomb pots tend to result in stacks getting pushed around the table at a high rate, and with players short buying a lot, I think this may take a toll on the ecosystem of players. Another concern I have for the 1-2 PLO game is keeping the buy-in at $500. I think I would have preferred to see an increase in the max buy-in with this change, but I understand this should be more of an entry-level game, so I see the trade-offs there. My other concerns are more so for the room. I think these bomb pots in every game are going to significantly reduce the number of hands seen per hour, especially for No Limit Hold'em, which is the bulk of these games. So the room may actually see a reduction in revenue from this change that the extra $4 in rake doesn't cover. This could in turn reduce promo money and tips for dealers, so this decision may need to be reevaluated re in the future. We all have a vested interest in seeing our local card rooms continue to flourish and grow, so I hope you all share your feedback as well. I'll also be talking to a couple of the floors at the room, so at least they can think about these things too. Do you like or dislike these changes, or have any feedback? Let me know what you think in the comments. In other news, uh, my plans for Vegas changed a bit as my housing plan fell through. I'll be flying out Friday, June 2nd, and tentatively coming back Wednesday, June 14th. I'm going to be uh, playing the Mystery Bounty and the Gladiators event, as well as a couple more uh, events in between there, and then reevaluate my plans afterwards. I'll also have more shirt designs up soon on my Teespring store, so if you see something you like, go ahead and grab one. The support is always appreciated, as are the likes, the subscribes, and the comments, so keep those coming as well. Remember, we constantly make conscious decisions, and how you treat and interact with other humans can literally change a life. Be kind. Always strive to be kind. Until next time, I'm Joey Pigtails, and I look forward to seeing you succeed. Be a good human. Bye!